The big question for today is can you make Korean barbecue better with American barbecue techniques? Let's find out. A big thanks to Borniac Smokers for sponsoring this video. And to do this experiment, I selected this beautiful brisket. Now, this is a locally grown brisket and it comes from a smaller cow. So I got a beautiful four kilograms of brisket. Small, but perfect family size and perfect for this experiment. Let's open it up. I trimmed off all the fat that doesn't render down except for the fat that sits in between the point and the flat. And you can see that running right here. But with this tiny brisket, we got this little floppy flat and it's about half a finger thick, which means when we cook this as a brisket, this is going to be very, very dry. And that's not going to be good for my project. So I'd rather take off the tiny bits and save them together with my fat to turn them into either burger meat or render this down into fat that I can use as beef tallow. And if I run my hand down the brisket, you can see it slopes down right here. And we want the brisket to go like that. Let's round this up a little bit. Now that looks like a brisket again. It's a tiny one, but it's a good one. And this is going to work really well for our experiment to mix American barbecue with Korean barbecue. And one of the most important things is the marinade in Korean barbecue. And that all starts with this. It's a pear. Yes, it's a nashi pear. And I got three of these beauties that I'm going to peel, remove the core and cut into parts. I'm going to grind them up into a smooth paste. And beside the nashi pears, we're going to have some sweetness. That's why I'm going to use a cup of dark brown caster sugar. Then I'm going to add a tablespoon of ground black pepper, four tablespoons of sesame oil, half a cup of mirin, two cups of soy sauce, half a cup of honey, and a whole bulb of garlic grated fine. A bunch of spring onions cut fine, and then the nashi pear go in, and it all gets mixed in together to one delicious Korean marinade. After letting it sit for about 20 minutes, I'm going to run half of this through a strainer. And I'll show you why that is. I need to get all of the big particles out of the marinade. You see the thick paste that is left? I'm gonna put it back in the other part of the marinade. Time to bring the brisket back into the show. Now this brisket looks absolutely beautiful and basically it could be ready to just with a little bit of salt and pepper, go on to the barbecue. But we really need to get that Korean style flavor on this brisket. I could brush it on, I could marinate it, but I can also inject it. It will save a lot of time on marinating because otherwise I would probably be marinating for at least two to three days. And even then I wouldn't be sure that all of the marinade would get inside this brisket. Now the cool thing about the Korean marinade is that the nashi pear has enzymes in it that will make the brisket even more tender. Because normally I would cook the marinade so the flavors would blend better. But this time I didn't because I want the enzymes to go inside the meat and do their job. I'm going to let the brisket sit and give the marinade a little bit of time to distribute within the brisket while I prepare my barbecue. Of course, for experiments like this, I like to use my most reliable piece of equipment, the Borniac smoker. I'm going to add some smoke chips to the side, set it to smoke at a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius and put in the brisket. And with this barbecue, the heat comes from the bottom. So I'm going to put in my brisket with the point pointing downwards. So the heat is coming up to the fattiest part of the brisket, the top of the brisket is prepared. Now I know what you're thinking, like, whoa, dude, you're forgetting the seasoning. I'm not, don't worry, it's all be fine. I'm gonna stick in a wireless thermometer to keep an eye on the temperature. That is going to go into the thickest part of the meat. Make sure you don't stick it in the fat because that won't give you an accurate temperature on what you need to know. The brisket has been smoking for four hours and look at it. <laughs> it kind of exploded. All the marinade is coming to the surface. It's like it's popping. What's important is that we now have our brisket at a core temperature of 70 degrees Celsius, which means that the brisket will no longer absorb smoke flavor and all of the rest of the smoke flavor will stick to the outside of the brisket, but does not draw into the brisket. So therefore we stop smoking. And that's what this switch is for. Second part is that the outside of the brisket is not dry yet. So we don't have a bark. And especially when smoking with electric smokers like this, we have a moist outside of the brisket. Now I'm going to raise up the temperature and set it from 120 
to a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius. That will make the outside of this brisket dry and have a bar consistency. However, yes, I know, still no seasoning. This is where the excess marinade comes to play. I'm going to take my mop and put that extra marinade on top of the brisket. I want a thick layer on the outside, which is going to dry out and that's going to make my bark. I'm going to put on a little bit now and then repeat this process every 15 minutes until I see that I have a good bark buildup. I'm going to let this run at a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius. But keep in mind, we introduced sugar to the equation on the outside of the brisket. Now, I don't want the sugars to burn, so I'm going to keep my eye on it. And keep in mind, I only need to get this brisket up to a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. And then it's time for the next step. And when you reach the desired core temperature, it's time to wrap up the brisket. Look at that brisket. What an absolute beauty. It is a really nice and thick layer of flavor. And that is absolutely perfect. Now all I need to do is wrap this brisket up. Now I'm not done wrapping yet because now we're getting to the next phase of this brisket cook, which is going to be the 10 hour resting period. And therefore I'm going to place it in an oven tray, seal that off with aluminum foil, and then I'm going to put it back on the Borniac smoker and set it to a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius and let it run for 10 hours. Now finally, let's get that brisket out and take a look at it. The Borniac's still running stable and it's such a dream to work with because it never ever fails. Oh, wow, this looks so good. Oh, it's one good looking brisket. Let's get this out. Oh. Let's see if that Korean barbecue flavor works its magic on this brisket. Well, let's just slice into this because I know you and me both want to take a look inside and see what it looks like. Ooh, we got a super, super juicy brisket and we got these dark spots. Do you see them? Those dark spots, that is where we injected the Korean barbecue into the brisket. Now you might notice there's no smoke ring and that's what you get when you have clean smoke. If you burn fat, you get nitrates in your air and that's where the smoke ring comes from. But with an electric smoker, you're getting much cleaner air, which means you're gonna have a cleaner cook. Now this doesn't mean your meat doesn't taste like smoke. Let's get a couple of more slices out of this brisket. <laughs> that is one tender brisket. It smells so good, I wish you were here able to smell this. Let's do the pull test. See if we cooked it to, to, yeah, that's what I want to see. There's a little bit of pull there, but it's not like a resistance or anything. It's just, it almost falls apart. <laughs> that is good. The brisket's cooked to perfection. It's a little small, I gotta admit, but it's juicy, it is tender. You never expect this from a brisket. Korean barbecue brisket. <laughs> this is so crazy, okay. This is so good. <laughs> what the We just made barbecue better. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, it could smell it the whole day, but this is... Wow. We're going to put the recipe on the website. So if you want to check it out, please do. Let us know what you think of the recipe oh. and if you enjoyed it. I recommend giving it a try. But hey, let me know what you think.